Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Valgard where once again I'm wearing the Sola shirt, the vintage hilarious one that is just, it's just too funny. I did sparks joy and I needed some joy sparked today. So <laughs> we're doing things that spark joy, which includes uh, installing an update for the Elgato. So hopefully it doesn't explode anymore and I've been testing it and it seems like it was working because it was starting to explode earlier. And uh, then I installed the update. Because sometimes installing the updates can really just mess things up. And so it's always like, oh, you know. Um, but yeah, this uh, is up. Discover what's disturbing the whips. <laughs> oh, no, we, okay, I need to go downstairs. Uh, discover what is disturbing the wisps. Um, I have that up simply to remind myself that I want to go to the necropolis and buy some armor. Um, then, uh, because this has been bothering me, we're gonna go find at least one or two of the soulless uh, memories. I don't know. <laughs> I am distressed. Today has been a weird day for like trying to talk and like I, my words just don't work and things are not great. I noticed too on my videos, um, I have noticed I'm losing subscribers, which is hilarious. Uh, the weak and cowards, uh, can leave. <laughs> and, uh, but the, like everything else is like skyrocketing. You guys seem to be enjoying this. So like those of you that are watching are enjoying yourself. And if people don't enjoy it, then like, that's fine. Right? Like it's free content. Like you just like go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, uh, it's, um, what was I thinking? Um, oh, I just happened to notice, too, that on, like, some of the stats that, like, some people do listen with the auto-generated subtitles, and I'm like, that must be an absolute nightmare. And I have, like, people have told me in the past that they'll use my, like, videos, and this happens to lots of people. Like, you know, you watch Let's Plays and stuff to, like, learn a language sometimes, like, to gain familiarity with, like, the cadence and speech patterns and stuff, and I'm always like, please don't listen to me for that. <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna be like, blah, 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 blah. It's not gonna be good. Uh, I just want to go no wait no gosh dang it. i wanted to bring dab right hand i want to go i don't know how to cancel what a button i'm pressing uh, missives oh writing from navarra city dear rook and professor valkarin the watchers are sending this letter for me i'm oh i'm the man who used to be enslaved by the meditorium my name is claudus thank you bless you for stopping them i would never have seen this end again if not for you i can sew very well the watchers say there is a great call for tailors of the deceased. This was strange to me, for we do not need such things in Deventer. But the watchers have fed me and found me work. I could never repay them or you, but I will help clothe Navarra's dead. May you walk in the light, Claudus, a free man. Boo, it really does. I don't know. Like, it's, it's got the exclamation point. I don't know what that symbol means, except for, like, it's like an, an alert, like warning. But it's like, okay, once I've read it, Take it away, because otherwise I'm going to be scared that I'm, like, missing something. <laughs> missing something, yeah. Um, I was actually thinking about it at one point. Where is it? Yeah, I did have a thought at one point, because my friend was doing this yesterday. Yesterday for me. Um, she was saying that she was kind of going in and out to, like, hear, like, in and out of the crossroads into the lighthouse to get the new, like, new, like, little ambient dialogues, you know? Just to hear people hanging out, and I want to do that. How do you know literally everyone? I don't know literally everyone. Mm. Almost. Every time we meet someone, you already know them. Mm. Morgan, the crows, the wardens, and the chantry lady with the big hat. Not to mention the Dreadwolf himself. <laughs> oh, is that everyone? He didn't even list ten people. It is random strangers. <laughs> it feels like a lot of people. Like, it does. Like, Harding is, like, you know, every time, like, a, some random person just rolls up, Harding's like, oh, hey, so-and-so. And does she, the Chantry lady with the big hat, is she saying the divine? You know? Or somebody else? Because, <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm still, like, I don't know if I'll have brought it up much to this point, but, like, the way they've handled the Dalish just, like, not acknowledging, really, the fact that, like, that, like, they're, 
whole entire like culture and religion has sort of collapsed in on itself at this point with the revelations we've been getting. Like I'm I'm having a hard time with that. And Bellara is like I, just made a fresh I don't know. Pot of coffee if you want that. Thank you. I need a fresh pot of coffee. This is this is a day for a fresh pot of coffee. And a and an attractive man staring broodingly into a f <laughs> He's so lucky. This is the posture of someone though who's like, ooh, like they've got things to think about, you know, like stare into the fire. You're almost like like, I've done this before. I found myself doing something similar where it's just like, you know, you're just like, Ugh, you know? I, I'm not saying it well. I can't speak today. A grocery list in Lucanus's handwriting. Cinnamon, please, Bellara. If it can be found, the Antoms Navy takes its share from whatever trading ships pass through Treviso. Lucanus. Interesting. They like... They like, uh, the, the Antam likes cinnamon. Spring onions, ring cabbage, short grain rice, vinegar, white for pickling, vinegar, dark for dipping with bread, coffee beans for Neb when she is back. Well, that's really nice. Honestly, like, maybe it would be weird if, like, not weird necessarily, but, like, the, because I brought them out so much, they did seem to have a rapport, and it was, like, it was, made it extra, like, meaningful when it was, like, the two of them being, like, and there was no, like, hate, which is good, right? Like, neither of them was, like, you know, how dare you prioritize your people over mine because that would just be the height of foolishness, you know? It's like, of course you're gonna prioritize the people you know and love, you know? Like, that's just human nature, people na it's just people nature, person nature, humanity. Never thought I'd see a living city smothered by the blight. He's still having a hard time with that. Uh, which is, makes sense. It's nice to have the companions react to stuff that you take them out on, you know. Um, Nev is still not speaking to me. Let's see if... Where is your boy? Oh, he has another quest for me. It's a good thing I came in here. Like, even though I accidentally came in and I didn't just go right back out again. I'm sorry, but I find it completely unnatural. Well, I don't get why you think cremation's so bad. Everyone outside Navarra burns their dead. All those lost vessels. Fine mansions reduced to ash. Manfred, for instance. How would his wisp have fared if I hadn't given it a body? <laughs> I hope I can ask these and then do one of the other options, you know what I mean? Where or uh, who did you get his body from? There was no single donor. The arms were recovered from a charnel pit. The ribs were a gift from a dear friend. And Manfred's wisp picked out his own skull from some donations. That was quite the day. <laughs> He's been fine company during my necropolis excursions ever since. <sighs> uh, it's sort of terrifying, but it's, the pleased hiss is cute. <laughs> and is that... Does Manfred actually ever talk, or does he just hiss, and is that literally all Matt Mercer was dumb to do? <laughs> What does Manfred understand, exactly? Simple things, but he grows. Spirits of curiosity oh, are voracious learners. he would do well then. The more he experiences, the more sophisticated his conclusions. With guidance, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you're hiring that person, you're like, like... Like he with of the great voice and great narrative, you know, uh, a plum. And you're like, can you just, like, gurgle hiss into the mic a few times? <laughs> like, yeah, bro, you're good. <laughs> you know? I know he's doing Viper, too, but it isn't just... <laughs> like, I, if, I, if I'm remembering right, I'm pretty sure Matt Mercer voices Manfred. Oh, it's so funny. Manfred's very aware for one of the common dead. Isn't he? You can see isn't why he? I leave him behind. I encountered him as a wisp in the necropolis years ago. A simple spirit, but so curious. He refused to leave my side. I don't know. So you built a skeleton for the spirit to live in? Spirits are formed from the emotions and desires of people in the mortal realm. Manfred's wisp came from curiosity. It's these spirits which animate the dead. 
Their drive revives the corpse, yet the corpse colors their actions. Ah. Thus, the eternal question, are undead inhuman spirits puppeting a body, or does some shade of the departed return? Yeah. See, the thing is here is it's like he, he's, po he's, he's posing this question, but he literally crafted this body. So, like, it would have to be various shades. Like, he's got it, what, like at least three different body parts? Like, three different, you know, entities whose body parts are being used? So, it's like, then you'd have three in there. You know what I mean? So, at least. I think she would have been involved in the discussions. I don't know. Like, I know she's not necessarily the science-y type, but, like, because, like, we do this in archaeology, right? Like, you get around the, you know, you sit at lunch, or, like, you're sitting around the campfire at night or whatever, and, like, you know, you start, you just start talking theory or, like, ideas, you know? And so it's, like, I feel like she would do that, too, right? You don't have to be, like, a, a, a nerdy mage to do it, you know? You could be a, a ground pounder who also enjoys a little bit of philosophical. I think any Mornwatch warrior or rogue type is going to be, like, somewhat philosophical in some ways right like you can't I think being so close to to the dead all the time and being so close to death and like life I think you could not not you know have thoughts about that you, you like thoughts about what you're doing you know it's it's a very visceral um, profession you know I and I personally I think and Rook seems to be a bit of a pragmatist I think she thinks they're puppets. We place spirits into bodies for convenience. There's little evidence the old soul returns. I take the opposite stance oh. myself, though I won't dissemble the argument's reliance on faith. Wow. Mm, wow. You know, you sound different when you Ooh. talk about watch things. <laughs> Way fancier. <laughs> I do no such. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Professor, I learned a lot today. My pleasure. <laughs> that was a, I most certainly do. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> that was so funny, actually. Oh my gosh, this voice actress is very good. Oh, oh, he's done lovely. How did he make a spiral staircase? Of course, he has a spiral staircase and more book. What is he, Dorian? Oh, he's like Dorian and Solus combined. He's got the, the, the pomp of Dorian and the, the curiosity the, or like the knowledge seeking, I guess, of Solus. But it's, it's extremely apropos that he has a, a, a curiosity spirit because he definitely, this guy, uh, Emmerich, right? That he attracted a curiosity spirit that was just like, ooh, like you, he's got, <laughs> he's got an altar with blood on it down there. <laughs> brother my dude could you, you need to clean up your little experiments all right <laughs> but uh no yeah he seems the sort who's constantly like you know if he's not like researching something because he's curious he's out in the world trying to figure things out like different in a way solus is like this like wisdom entity right at least that's what i think like originally he was um and kind of maintained sort of like a, a sage hermity persona you know, in, in Inquisition, but I think it was it was still true to him in some way, um, more solemn. Whereas Emric is very like you know, oh, like how how interesting, how intriguing, you know, and like willing to like jump into discussions and stuff. And it's so fun to have like somebody talking to me in depth of like my like the opinions that we would both have because we've come from similar circles who have had discussions of this sort of a thing. Thank you for all your help arranging things, Manfred. Yes, I'd say this place is quite acceptable now. Oh, that's an interesting item. I'd say this place is quite acceptable. You could use more decor, I feel, in general down here, potentially. Maybe it would be too much. Uh, you should probably clean up your science experiments. Very cool, very cool. I like his getup. I hope people get along with him. He seems incredibly friendly. Oh. 
Let me run in. Bother Varric. I just keep running back and forth. I'm gonna run in, bother Varric. And then, and then we will go get me some new armor. And then, well, actually on the way, because we're going to go through the Fade, pick up a Solus memory, and then go to the place and get armor. I'm still weirded out by this Fade crap, but this part is kind of cozy. <laughs> it's nice, I think, he, you know what, I bet you he'd be writing a book. I bet you he hasn't done that in a long time and he probably misses it. It'd be nice to like give him some paper and be like, you know what, write what it, write what you write what you're feeling. You know what I mean? Like not like not like a journal. You could do that too, but like, you know, it's just like, hey, take this time to relax and rest. Like you haven't probably done that in a long time at this point. Change of Barney. His his card looks really good too, and all of his promotional material made him look a little more intimidating. Um, so it is funny to me that he uh, is not in the least bit intimidating. Oh, I could have. I forget. You can change your party right here. It's okay. I did want to hear some bants. The voices again. Oh, we're being sneaky. Will any other trees in the area do this? I don't know if we've encountered any. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what is that? Oh, the door. This might be the only one that does this, or is this obvious? I'm told he is asleep, only to see our sanctums defiled. Even Arlathan is trampled by castoffs and mortals. We must secure the Alluvians. We shall. The Ontom are uneasy in the crossroads, but they know their duty. If they fail, give the best preserve to me for improvement. Dead Ontom? We're already on it. No! That's not, we should, that's bad. <laughs> We should not be giving her more material to experiment with. Interesting. Um, so they were all, so they were asleep too. Here, I was kind of thinking that they had been awake while imprisoned. Um, but this could, is that why we only have those two left? Is that why those two are the only ones that came out? Is there, is this actually, God, oh, sorry, I have like so we've been postulating for a long time that the old elven gods and the or the, the Tevinter, the Tevinter old gods and the ancient elven gods are one and the same, um, but the numbers don't quite match up, um, and and I've talked with friends about this like several times and like I've crunched the numbers like I've looked at them and I've tried to see where the parallels are between like the descriptions of each one, you know, um, and. I was thinking, I was like, oh, that maybe the, the fate, this, this thing that Solus did was only wide enough f to let like two of them out. But, and, and so the rest are like sleeping somewhere, you know, and will be, you know, maybe problems later or in other games or whatever. Um, but potentially they are all already dead. And these two are the only ones left. Oh my gosh, um, that would be huge. That would be huge because again, we had that issue in Inquisition where Solus was like the most upset I have ever seen him when we figured out, except for when his friend, you know, the Fade Spirit issue happens where his friend, the spirit gets taken against their will. Um, and then he goes and kills, if you let him, he, he will go and kill those mages that did that. Um, but the... Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. The most upset he gets, one of the most upsets he gets, is when the we hear about the warden plan to preempt the blights by going and finding the old gods, the archdemon, or the old gods before they become archdemons, essentially, the old Tevinter gods, who are all supposed to be dragons, right? Which is what. The, oh my gosh, um, 
What was they? What were they just thinking? The uh, the old arch the, the adventure gods are all. Oh, but the a ancient elven gods were associated with dragons. We're learning more in this game that they, it wasn't just mythal potentially that they all were associated with dragons in some way. Maybe they each had one that was essentially bound to them on call, and that is what the Tevinter people potential or the 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 you know Tevinter magisters were worshiping was the dragons who were essentially personifications of the gods who slept maybe the archde or the or the dragons that become archdemons are not archdemons till they're blighted um they are Tevinter old gods that are the, the lore is that they're sleeping and then the dark spawn and the blight find them yes because the blight does like my friend and I were talking about this again just recently, where like today, where it was like talking debating the sentience of the blight essentially, and I'm I maintained it was more like a virus or or a fungus, you know, not really like sentient in like that it has like you know not sentient where it has like thoughts necessarily, it just has like you know a a a, cons a, a consuming instinct, you know, just like basic destruction. It doesn't want to like set up puppet kings or anything, but to be fair, the darkspawn do have like. The darkspawn themselves have a sort of sentience, you know, and most of them don't really talk. That's a really unique thing if the darkspawn can talk, but they, like, can, like, they have directives, essentially, sort of. Um, so maybe, like, maybe the Blight does have a sentience that we just haven't really acknowledged up to this point, um, and now it's getting even worse. But the Blight is seeking out, potentially, these remnants of the, of the ancient elven gods, in the form of their dragons that they had bound to themselves. So those dragons so deeply bound also slept when the Tevinter, when, when the ancient elven gods were imprisoned, right? And then the Blight finds these dragons and awakens them. And like, cause so the Darkspawn are actively searching at all times for an old God. Like they're actively searching for a Tevinter old God. Um, and when they find one, like, they're digging, 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 all, like, wherever that, I'm surprised the world hasn't collapsed at this point because there's probably so many tunnels underground. But, like, and that's the thing, is, like, the, the darkspawn come from underground. The dragons come from underground, like the archdemons do. Um, and the darkspawn find them and blight them and wake them up and bring them out. And I wonder if it's, like, in some way it was to try to, like, open the veil. Like, this whole blight thing was to, like, cause so much disruption, maybe, that they could tear down the veil and let more of the blight in, which is what Solus is saying, right? That he also sealed away the blight. Um, the, like, the, the origin source, or whatever it is, of, like, the full power of the blight, and we only have a fragment of it. And maybe that's why he was so terrified of the wardens seeking out the archdemons and killing them, is that it would maybe give the blight a leg up somehow, but, like... I wish I could remember exactly what he says about it, because he gets very upset about it, and, like, is, that's the, uh, I think the only thing I disagreed with him was, was keeping the Grey Wardens around instead of banishing them, um, because he, he respects the Grey Wardens as, like, a group from what they're trying to do, but he said, he says that, he's like, but he says, but this plan is madness, that's what he says for them to try to, like, preempt the blight and just kill the archdemons, you know? Or kill the dragons. Interesting, because I'm also thinking of, like, the way Sola says that, like, the creatures of the gods or the objects of the gods are imbued with some of them after a while. And even that one note that we read says that, like, Solus has put so much of himself into his own creations that, like, this, this person was, like, you know... They they asked I think they asked like what will happen if like something like they're, they're like basically oh god I can't remember exactly what they say but it was just like that they put so much of themselves in and then like what exactly is being created and what's left behind you know um, so if they ha and they showed that mural at the very beginning of the game underground into Venter when we go to try to stop Solus of the dragon being bound and I again I thought it was mythal but it might just be an actual dragon and they were each bound a dragon to themselves and now yeah those are like sort of like their avatars almost and maybe when that dragon gets blighted and is killed it kills off the god associated with them but then I'm really not sure why Solus would be upset if we went in and killed the preemptively killed 
the the dragons, the arch, the ones that would become arch demons, the old god, like the Timid old god dragons. Because it seems like he doesn't like them, you know. Like obviously, you know. So it's like you he he can't kill them himself, but this seems like a way to kill them. And eventually, when they die, when they all die, like especially if they were all dead, he could potentially open the veil, but the veil is holding back the blight. What was his plan for the blight, also? Like, apparently, if he, I guess he was going to do it super fast and switch them over to a different spot. So, the veil isn't holding back the blight. It's like a, spe there's like a prison within the veil. The veil's just a byproduct of the ritual to imprison the old gods. To imprison, sorry, the elven gods. Okay. I am registered straying on the board pins. Interesting. Here I was thinking there were other gods hanging out, and I, I think they're probably dead. I'm gonna have to crunch the numbers again. Because there could be, like, a lot... Even even with Solus as an addition, I think there was a discrepancy in the numbers. And I also... If you look at the Astrariums, the like constellations in Inquisition, each one has a myth and a legend attached to it that are, like, they're usually to Vinter origins um, of the myths, but then the writer, who's uh, a sister in the Chantry, not for the Genitivi... Um, but she says, and she's a little, she's a little more biased than he is. It's a little more obvious. Um, but she says there are some whisperings of rumors that maybe these particular constellations had elven associations that were then like co-opted or corrupted by Tevinter later. Um, so, and some of those, some of those constellations are associated with the elven gods. At least potentially, or like she's, you know, she's like, and supposedly, or whatever, you know, she says stuff like that. Um, wow. I get that's just, this is all just theory supposition that I'm hopefully gonna put timestamps for <laughs> in the video. But if that's the case, that's interesting, but still doesn't quite explain why Solus gets so upset about the plan to try to kill off the archdemons before they can become blighted. I guess the, the old god dragons before they can become arch demons. Unless their death does something to like weaken the veil preemptorily or like give a leg up to the blight or something, you know what I mean? Or if like it's easier to like control or track the blight that's that's here in the mortal realm through old god like intervention or like being you know if it's like whoa a big dragon full of blight and a dark spawn army it's easier to stop and it's easier to notice it's easier to stop whereas if we just let the blight kind of like ooze its way through the world it might actually be like it would be so slow and methodical that it might be too late before we noticed something like that you know what i mean like it's better to have the big bam in your face and fight it back than it is to let it creep insidiously and like undermine the foundation of your entire continent essentially you know interesting okay there are two regrets of the dread wolf over here on the path that we have to go towards my new armor that i'm hopefully gonna get and i have a bunch of valuables to sell so I'm gonna I'm gonna up my up my ante with the Morn Watch. Let's go. Let me in. Onward. Ooh, some of these might be locked actually. This one is locked behind this. I haven't done the Lost Ages one. Emric, have I got this right? Manfred's a wisp. A wisp of curiosity, to be precise. And this wisp was so curious about our world, it just couldn't wait to come here, animate a body, and serve you tea. Manfred enjoys boiling the water. <laughs> He's mesmerized by the steam. <laughs> He's mesmerized by... Oh my gosh, it's a wisp merchant. Wow. 
Is that warden armor though ish kinda? Yeah, I think it is. I would like more and watch stuff. A ceremonial blade forged after the fifth blight. Its wingspan, its wingspan hill honors the warden's victory and promises clear skies ahead someday. I'm gonna cry. The fifth ward, the fifth blight was when you know our warden, like our warden, saves us from the fifth blight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. Oh my gosh. I don't think this was open before. Ah, there it is. I Over recognize there. it. Another entryway, like the one that took us to that soulless memory. I am ready to cry. Or at least be torn up inside. Shredded. The Another labs below. Oh. You're awake. How's your head? The guards really knocked you about. Uh, well, it's... Do you remember our mission? Gillanane's lab. The wolf sent us to infiltrate her testing grounds. Things didn't go perfectly to plan. But the wolf smuggled in help. A key. If you can fight, grab the key and we'll run for it. Just be ready for whatever the witch has in store. I want the ancient elf armor very she badly. one of Solus's agents. Yeah, I get I got that. We'll move faster if we split up. See you ahead. That sounds like a terrible plan. A terrible, terrible plan. But now we get to see the depravity of Gillanon. Oh, baby. Light. Be careful. It feels older here. More primal. The blight? Interesting. Good thing we brought Davrin, huh? I'm gonna show you guys too, really, really super quick. I changed up all my runes. I have your current potions additional effects are applied and I get plus one and maximum potions. Uh, so I took away, I think, the one that did necrotic energy or was that? No, <laughs> that was that one. Um, I gain invulnerable if I activate this one, uh, which is cool, just for a bit, I assume. And then, because of however long the rune lasts, and then ranged attacks break through your enemy's guard for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, thrilling. Quite a setup. They were all new ones, and I was like, oh dang. You know, and my. my Remember, these memories pack a punch. <laughs> Not want to hit you. Oop. Good, you destroyed your own nesting pool. Oh! Oh! I have. Ooh, dang it! <laughs> Light infested her lab. Uh -huh. The memory is not over. We need to fight our way out of here before Gillanane finds us. So maybe she thought she had it under control, and she did not. It did infest her lab. I didn't even. I was just like, yeah, I'm used to seeing it like this, but this is like it wasn't supposed to look like this. <sighs> Interesting, ye old Lovecraftian nightmares. Which way am I supposed to go? Okay, I was like, I want to do the dead end first. Interesting. The mother of Hala. A pantomime theater mask of Gilanane. In narrative, she is the price and acceptance of purpose and the becoming that allows no return. Betrayal and devotion become equals to her. Something happened with her and Andril. And I know in, like, the, the legends, Andril goes insane... Potentially because of the blight? No, I think they didn't get affected by the blight yet. Or, yeah, maybe. Andrew gets affected by the blight and brings it back, maybe? 
Anyway, I forgot I have... Ooh. Oh, that's what that one I bought. Yeah. I have... Oh, some miscellaneous ones and more watch ones. Charter in Menrathis. The Menrathis paper with one item circled. Prices for Lyrium may soon rise higher than the Archon's Palace after recent negotiations with the Orzammar Embassy broke down into fighting. A representative for the Dwarves claimed that Deventer negotiators were venatory and suggested that their minds have been poisoned by Red Lyrium. Deventer officials deny use of Red Lyrium and insist that it is not used in any official magical business. A note written in the margins lists, Francesca and I made things a little harder for the venatory with Lyrium tougher to come by and the Red variant officially banned. I hope you're doing alright with your own Lyrium-related issues. Stay safe safe. Thanks. Letter to Charter. Charter, I'm assuming you got my last message about Varric. We're adjusting with Rook stepping up. We're still searching for answers on the Elven Gods we released. Solos remains contained and less of an immediate problem. How's the situation in the South? Has there been any activity related to the Elven Gods? What about the Antom? They seem entrenched in Antiva, though any increase in the number of scouts might signal them getting ready to move. I'm still relieving red letters regularly from my Ma, so I gather Ferelden is far enough away that trouble hasn't reached it yet. What about Orle or the Free Marchers? Please respond as soon as you can. The usual channels remain open. Charter and Marnus Pell. Sorry, my lips are like feeling weird. <laughs> a paper from the Deventer city of Marnus Pell with one item circled. Scandal struck the household of Magister Pomonius as eldest son and heir Sorokin had been found dead in what appears to have been a venat venatory ritual gone awry. Rumors in the household speak of escaped slaves and stolen artifacts, and some are suggesting that the death was due to venatory infighting. A visibly angry Magister Pomonius declared his son innocent of any wrongdoing and blamed elven thieves for the incident, of course. A note written in the margins. L Lace, Vea and I were in the neighborhood. The artifact is safe. Doesn't seem related to your work. Assume every noble to Venter family, not with the Shadow Dragons, has venatory bullying strings. Great. That's good to know. Charter and Solace. The city! Are we, we, are we never going to go to that city? At the end of Inquisition, they stab the knife. And, well, yeah. Is it Inquisition? Inquisition or Trespasser, they stab the knife into the map, right? And it's in the Deventer Imperium, but right next to it is a small city called Solus. And it's like, ah! And we were, I think we were, we went, like, we had somebody go investigate, and that's potentially where he'd been from, maybe at some point? I don't remember, but... Um... The Silent Festival will take place this year after cancellations the last few years from concerns about Anton pushing east from Pervertian team. Local organizers have confirmed that Navarre mages will be coming to help celebrate the lives of those recently lost with visions of the Fade. The festival will include feasting, dancing, and seances. As the veil is expecting to be quite thin from the spiritual energies, miners with magical talent should not be left unattended. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So, but Navara and Tevinter get along apparently well enough to like have Navara and mages who specialize in death magic come and help them celebrate a festival openly, even though they're kind of bound by, I guess maybe Navara is more of like a mix between Tevinter and, and the rest of Ferelden, or the rest of um, like Orle and Ferelden, Southern Thetis. They are kind of right in the middle, so, but I'm surprised the Chantry hasn't like gotten angry at them for what they do. Lace, we investigated thoroughly. It really does appear to be coincidence that the city shares a name with our mutual acquaintance. Seems like it should have some connection, but no. Had to be sure, though. Charter. Are you serious? Is that the, is that the dabs being like, you just so, yeah, I mean, it was kind of funny. We were thinking about doing something for it, but there's no actual connection there. Like, okay. Like, why would you do that? Why would you name a city Solace? It's an elven name into Vinter, which maybe they have kept some of the old elven names, and, like, it technically means pride, but, like, that's just, I don't know, give us something. That was ten years of imagining that and, like, thinking there'd be some clue to him there. Charter and Virantium. Fighting between Tevinter and Antam forces has calmed down, with Tevinter reclaiming a lost town after the Antam cannons mysteriously failed. The town is now safe, and former prisoners are being treated for their injuries. Sadly, several war mages were killed, retaking the city, reportedly victims of Antam assassins. A note written in the margins lace. Marius, Tessa, and I paid a visit. Venatori and Antam might be serving the same gods, but they're not knowingly working together and are easily to enough to turn on one another. So, this is Charter... Post, like, has Charter gotten back to Harding then? Like, Harding's like, oh, I haven't heard anything from Charter. But this is, like, post us be saying that, like, the elven gods are out. You know what I mean? And, like, wrecking havoc. And apparently Charter was in the area, like, into Vinter. 
I mean, I know she can't, like, come with us. And like, that's fine. Charter's doing her own thing. But, like, like, with the Inquisitor, but... So we are getting letters, then? We do have contact with the South in some way? Yeah, letter to Charter. Okay. The Morn Watch. A distressing sight. How I regret visiting Amaranthine today. I'd set out to explore a chantry described in one of Brother Bedan's travelogues. Harding came along, but somehow had her fill after only a few minutes. Dude, he's just like me for real! <laughs> While inspecting some exquisite mosaics, I spotted a funeral procession through a window. I watched, frozen fast, as the mourner's fed a shroud into a bonfire. Harding didn't understand why I looked green. Don't those outside Navarra ever find it heartbreaking dwelling on the departed without the comfort of a body? Even their ashes are scattered from the, to the wind from Emmerich's diary. Again, different death rituals right like um there are some old cultures older older cultures that will when they cremate the dead um they will in, like eat a tiny tiny amount of the ashes which are just carbon they're just carbon atoms at that point right you're you're it's 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 extremely like ash is very clean you know what i mean like it's just carbon at that point um, but it's something about, it is, the, the ritual is like you take a part of them into you and then you keep it with you forever. You know what I mean? And it's a very small amount and spread out to like a few of like the relatives. You know what I mean? I don't, and I think it still happens a little bit today. It's generally not advised, I think, by the medical community because I think there can still be like, depending on like the death or whatever, there can still be stuff that can transfer over that you wouldn't want. Um, but for the most part, ashes are, ashes are very, like, just clean. It's just carbon. It's just broken down to carbon, you know? Um, but this is very cool. And I'm, this is me in museums, 100%. It's like, Harding came along, but somehow I had her fill after only a few minutes. Like, listen, when I took my sister to Italy earlier this year, I don't know when this video goes up, but in 2024, like, uh, she was just like, oh, like, we tr I tried. I was trying to go quickly, and we'd still take, like, at, like, several hours to get through a museum, and I was just like, hee, -hee. you know, like, I go through, my family's figured it out, like, I read, like, every entry in the museum. The Louvre overwhelmed me when I went so many years ago. I was just like, well, like, I want to go back someday, but I was like, I got so overwhelmed. There's so much there, and it was just like, I can't do it. <laughs> my brain just went, you know? But I always take so long, and I do the same thing in video games, where I'm walking around, and I'm like, oh my god, look at the architecture, look at the art, whoa, like, <gasps> Emmerich and I are going to be good friends. Oh, I'm so excited. A monthly stipend. I don't understand why Lucanus claims it is bizarre for Manfred to receive a modest monthly stipend. Manfred may need the funds one day, and he's capable of making small purchases with supervision. I admit, however, he fancies the strangest things. Some recent acquisitions. A silver-backed Antivan hand mirror, twenty blue marbles, four sticks of chalk he presented one to Harding, a jeweled brooch shaped like a lizard. I had to make up the difference. He must learn to tell copper from gold. A brass cup, a rather fine quill knife, confiscated. Two pounds of almonds removed to the kitchen, yet more string. The latest item cost nothing. Manfred's become very fond of a little wooden stick he enjoys pointing about. Ugh, that's really adorable, oh my gosh! Emmerich, note to Harding on souls. Interesting that him and Harding are apparently going to town, like, having conversations about necromancy. I would think Bellara would be f the focus of some of this stuff. Note left on a thick book. It wasn't a silly question at all. There's an enormous difference between a spirit and a soul, but the metaphysics are really taught outside mage circles. A soul is the richly numinous force within every living being. You and I, our companions, our opponents, all possess a soul. When we slumber, it slips into the Fade, our most intimate connection with the land of dreams. A spirit is an entity formed entirely in the Fade from raw magic. While both dwell in intangible regions, a trained mage will never mistake one for the other. I found Cravertine's Dialogue of the Outer Reaches to be the best starting book on the subject. If you'd like to pursue his absolutely great grouping theories on auto autogenous liminality. Interesting! And that is, a, that is a, a key difference between a soul and a spirit. And again, like, he brought it up. There's actually, like, it's never been, like, you know, set down by the by the devs or anything in the lore. Like, here's what happens. It's like, it's it's just, like, many religions or belief patterns or whatever, where it's like, you, you have what you think happens, but nobody can confirm it. You know what I mean? Um, and so the Chantry says that when you, when you, when you dream, your, your spirit is how they refer to it for the most part in games, um, but it looks like we're going to be differentiating them, which I think is smart. Your soul goes into the fade and, like, dreams, you know? You don't really know you're there. You're just dreaming, um, you know, and it, everything, but then... 
when you die, it's said that your soul, aka or your spirit back in the day, would would go through to the maker, right? Like you pass through the fade to get to the maker. Um, and they're never quite sure if you can get, if it's possible to get stuck on the way, you know, um, and get stuck in the fade. If the like manifestations people see of their dead loved ones are just spirits, like actual spirits, mimicking a soul that they saw pass by, or like a life that they saw pass by, or if it's the actual soul, you know, of the person. So, interesting. I like this. Mm-hmm. Misconceptions about the necropolis. No one has more respect for Brother Genetivis scholarship than I. He's a Genetivis fan. Oh my gosh, I love this guy so much. Oh, but his writing on Navarra details very little of their practices as the Grand Necropolis. The more I travel, the more I'm convinced these Elysians have led to unfortunate conclusions by people of less than generous imagination. For example, we do not lock up our dead to pound fruitlessly against their coffins in the dark. Our departed lie in peaceful state or even wander. The undead tableau are loving constructions, not dress up with corpses. And in the event a malign spirit causes a disturbance, we don't simply throw them in a tomb and toss the key. Sometimes I think Warden Davern crafts these questions to tease me. I was see, and I, I was like, I wanted to bring Davern and Emric out because I, I was feeling like Davern and Emric, because Davern's very like pragmatic in, in a lot of ways, you know. Whereas Emric seems very fanciful and like enthusiastic, you know. Where I could see Davern slipping in some like questions where he's also just kind of like, you know, oh, you weird, you strange, more and watch people, but also like, um, like kind of a subtly silly question that Emric will take very seriously. <laughs> Oh, this is so fun. Oh my gosh. Complications in the veil. The veil, our immutable eternal barrier against the fate, or so we thought. There has been recently, a, there has recently been a great weakening in the veil. Thanks to a confluence of magic in the south, we've yet to understand. What scant information we have paints a chilling picture. The veil may be under, I was going to say, this is probably a long, long time ago, and I am reading that it was, not long time, it was 10 years ago. Uh, what scant information we have paints a chilling picture. The veil may be undone permanently, either in large parts or as a whole. We cannot give way to panic. Should this threat be real, someone must be prepared to answer. If the veil falls, thousands of lives, all we hold dear, will be swept away. I cannot say what would take their place. Notes from a lecture by Emric Volcaran in 942 Dragon to a council of Chantry scholars, nobility, and Navarran mages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm on minute 50 of this recording, and I've mostly talked. Yee-hee! I'm the one who decided, who decided to go on a little lore dump tangent off in the corner after I picked up, I think it was a memento. Oh, jeez. Wolf! Oh, you came for It's us. solace! Your key was enough. This unnatural corruption dim- Hold on. You can't me. <laughs> This is so weird to play a game where your freaking former lover that like had like that broke your heart and like the the romance that the story hasn't quite completed yet is like in it and your character isn't in it yet and like I don't know I'm just like I'm having a, I'm having a difficult time. I really am. Like, I, you guys would not believe how many times I've listened to those Trespasser songs right now. <laughs> I can't wait to send these to my friend once she freaking gets to the point that I'm in. Do, do. I'm trying to get, like, the flame just right in the background. I don't know. Listen. I have a problem, and it's fine. I accept it. Hamrick's just in the back. <laughs> He's vibing. And in my personal attention. It is strong. It has already blocked the escape route I had planned. We will need another way to the surface. Let's all split up and find it. I will destroy then... what corruption I can. You must cut through these monstrosities before Gillanane unleashes something worse. Solar sound. What? Rattled. He, he did. The light shook him up. He did not. Well, it's like, well, okay, why are you sending scouts in here if you're going to come in and take care of it or, like, check it out personally? 
like he feels like the kind that's a bit more hands on too, where like he would rather come in and check things out personally, especially. And maybe he just got something later, like some some scrap of news that he was like, "Oh wait, this is maybe bigger than I thought," and like goes to try to check it himself, you know. And this is. This would be upsetting if this is your first time seeing something like this, right? You're like, hold on, hold on, this is not like anything else we've dealt with. Like, this is, this is actual, like, abomination stuff, you know? Like, not abomination in the sense of, like, a mage being taken over, obviously. But, like, you know, really grotesque and uh, scary. You see boundless creation and choose to destroy it? Bow. Learn respect for the life that will succeed you. It's She's birthing using something. The testing rounds against us. Yes, I see. I have to turn things, but it looked like it birthed something just now, which is horrifying. I'm not sure what the point of turning. Oh, unless the oh the door will open if I. Okay. If it's facing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boundless creation, huh? Time to go. Free and faster than anticipated. Perhaps you and your allies warrant more study. I mean, it's not that. Oh, it wasn't that hard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know. What is she freaking? Oh, who's the who's the voice in uh, Gladys? Gillian and Gladys. They would get along. We've got company. I don't know what those guys are. But I don't like them. Two of us can play that game. I think we broke through to Gillinane's prized specimens. These darkspawn may be an old memory. They look familiar. I wonder. Maybe the darkspawn we've been seeing aren't new. Maybe that mm. one. Then what? That would be intriguing. But then why have they turned into what they turned into for the last, like, whatever, 1,000 years or whatever it's been, you know? Intriguing! I got a Griffin Lantern! I got decor! Here, oh, I'm stoked. The blessing you deny. Oh, help me! Ah. Damn! Give the name, got her. I mean, we can't change it. It's a memory, but yeah. My blood! I'm burning up! Look out! Oh, I messed up the timing. Ow, I definitely- whoa, 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 I did not mean to take two potions, actually, I was trying to- <laughs> That's upsetting, that's really upsetting. I'm like, are we living a memory, or, like, is Gillanon somehow actually seeing us? She was very different in that one, though, right? She looked like an actual elf with, like, just, like, a massive headdress, but, like, she's obviously become more Lovecraftian over time. You would unleash a blight on this world and call it a masterwork. You, who are the most sensitive of us. All that I am belongs to the pursuit of creation. You chose to constrain yourself. I must climb to the heights only understood by gods. I go now to join them. Yes. <laughs> You are greater than any of them. Please... Help me. Why do I get to choose? And I think at this he's they're not at war, obviously, it seems like. They are, um... Like, the, he's not fighting the Evineris. He was just keeping an eye on them and trying trying to stop them through like normal means like with the letters and everything but now and Gilanon was the one that he he spoke to also in letters right where he was like you know what they offer is is not what you 
what you actually want, probably. You know what I mean? Like, it's... But they makes the comment about love and everything. But I, at this point, especially, I think he would still be, like, he's obviously very compassionate about these. Like, you were the most sensitive of, of all of us. Like, how could you, how could you inflict this pain on people? Um, and I think, if nothing else, I mean, solace can try a cure, and it might hurt more than help. I thought we would have a choice to, um, like, mercy kill her. You know what I mean? Like, she's infected with the blight, and I thought it would be a mercy kill. So now I'm like, Solus, try a cure. It's like, mm, I don't know if that's actually, if it's going to do worse things. Like, it's like, oh, obviously, try to cure her. But then it's like, uh, I guess unless, unless this is the dev saying, do you want to make Solus... A, be more of a villain or do you want to make him more of like the martyr that like sacrificed his values in the end for trying to do that for the greater good interesting if we get to have a little bit of a say in that or maybe I'm just uh, just trying to justify this decision you know what I mean trying to justify that I have this decision at all I yeah come on be the god she needs help her I am so sorry I failed you there is only one way I can help you now. Wolf. This place and the corruption within it must be eradicated. No trace can be allowed to spread. Go. Your work here is done. There is no need for you to witness what I must do. Yeah. A oh, mercy killing. Solus destroyed the lab, the blight that was here. And his agent. If I really thought I could stop the blight for good, I wonder what I would have done. This fragment might tell us more. This is so interesting, too. And it's so good that I brought Davrin. Maybe I should be bringing Davrin on these. Because if the blight's going to get involved more, it would be interesting to have his opinion on these things. Um, and, like, a history of the blight. You know what I mean? Almost. Um... So it seems like this is this is when they when Solus first found out about the blight, and this is when I think Gilanon was trying to use the blight and her status into godhood to like make up with Andrew or something. Um, interesting. Oh my gosh, the lore of the game. <laughs> Watcher's robes. I got I got some stuff. I got things and stuff And I have that and I'm getting this things and stuff. Oh Yeah, I forgot they're all blinded. Oh Oh, but it's worse than what I have I'm good I say blighted, but it's actually necrosis, which is different. Those are two different status effects. Oh, I can't change the appearance here. It would be only if I picked up the actual armor, which I haven't. Alas! Let's see what I can get going. Yes, the Reaper! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um... What do I want to get rid of? These two are physical. And if I'm gonna lean into necromantic stuff. But I do love I do love the Sparta kick. Mm, I do love the Sparta kick. But it is a single like a single attack essentially, which corresponds, right? Like this is a nice AoE. This is a nice defensive ability, and this would is a, is a good offensive ability. I wonder if they did, they did that on purpose. It's almost like they are developers who know how to build a game. That's if, it, if that is the case, neat. But yeah, I think I will trade out my Sparta kick for now for another single use, like, uh, offensive attack. Oh, I just want to, I'm going to use it right now. I want to see what it looks like. Let me use it. Not enough rage. I have to have a hundred rage. Oh my goodness. It requires more rage than kicking people does. That sucks. 
this looks like, um, it's like, okay, yeah, you're gonna pop out here and then not be able to get back up this way. You have to come back around, you know? What did that open? So I think that door was already open over there. Maybe I was like, oh, I'll see it in editing. I'm not gonna see this video for ages and eons. This monster, the Gloom Howler, have you ever seen its like? Never. No warden I've talked to has either. It's definitely it's a blood, magister. But not darkspawn. Smart. It's a something special. Normally I'd relish something like this. <laughs> now, you'll find a son siblings. I'm certain. So am I. I just this is so for the wardens are so secretive. It would so track though that like but, I mean, we had Corypheus happen. Does nobody remember Corypheus? Like, he called himself a magister. He was a talking dog spawn, and he tried to take over the world. He called himself one of the old original Tevinter magisters who broke into the Golden City and blighted the world. You know what I mean? And, like, he was a talking dog spawn with crazy powers. Like, I mean, we had the architect in the Origins, D Origins DLC Awakening, and that never has been acknowledged ever again, really, except for the fact that, like, I think in Inquisition you can read something that says, oh yeah, somebody wandering around in the deep roads for, like, two weeks who was only eating nug meat thought he saw, like, two darkspawn, like, tall, menacing darkspawn, like, talking to each other, you know, and, like, what, or, like, three of them, like, one of them killed another one, like, I don't know, it's a whole thing, and it was assumed by me and others that, like, those were potent potentially the Darkspawn Magisters, or the Magisters who've been turned into Darkspawn at this point now, and who have lost their memories, at least some of them, um, and are like only have like a vague remembering of anything. And, uh, oh my gosh, I am 99% sure it's one of the original Magisters. And, like, I'm like, oh, the Wardens are keeping secrets, blah, 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 because they kept Corypheus locked in a tower and not very many people knew about him and blah, blah, blah. But we had Corypheus happen! Everybody knew about him. Everybody knew what he th what he said he was. You know, we didn't keep that a secret. Like, <laughs> please, my blood pressure can only take so much. Anyway, I should probably call this recording here because I'm pretty sure I've been recording for ages. Well, I'm pretty sure I have. I can look at the timer. Um, but yes, anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. This has been exciting for me. I love Lord Dump episodes. <laughs> so anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed. And uh, I'm going to cut away now and say thank you to my patrons. All right, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Sapling Tier patrons, Riz Galito, thank you so much, and Sebastian James, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my Forest Tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.